Hello, my name is Tom Frana. I'm the president and the CEO of Ion Corporation. We're here today with Kevin Reed, the CEO and CTO for VirtueStream. We're going to have a quick interchange about the cloud. Kevin represents a company that is on the leading edge of the cloud marketplace. Kevin, how did you ever get into the cloud market? So that's a great question. The cloud really has been around for a long time. I can truly say that five years ago when we started the business, we very much were convinced that the cloud was a term that would go away. It was all hype. But clearly uh, we were wrong. Clearly this was um, something fundamental at the, uh, at the naming level. However, the fundamentals of cloud are really all about how do you leverage infrastructure across multiple applications so that you could drive economic value. And that we believed in as a fundamental part of VirtuStream and hence why we got into the cloud business even though we thought the term cloud would go away. Today there's hundreds of companies that offer cloud services. What makes your cloud solution different than the competitors? I think the main difference is what we call enterprise class computing. So from the very beginning, our goal was not to look at massive hyperscale web-oriented applications, but really to look at the types of things that are mission critical for businesses that run those applications. So when you think about ERP, supply chain, financial systems, um, those types of applications that some people now refer to as legacy applications, that was always our focus. At the enterprise level, you can do both on-premise as well as off-premise? That is correct. When we started five years ago, we thought the market was too nascent for a software solution. What we needed to do is operate our own infrastructure as a service offering, where we had our own data centers and we provided that. With those learnings, we then created our own software product. And that software product is now available for use by large commercial and federal uh, agencies so that they can actually build private clouds. So yes, we now support both the on-premise and the off-premise models. In the off-premise models, your locations are US-wide, worldwide? Uh, I would say worldwide. We actually have um, more installations of our off-premise worldwide than we do uh, in the US. And I think mainly because in the beginning we wanted to make sure that we could expand our footprint with either large commercial entities or large service providers globally so that we could actually extend the reach of the VirtuStream service offerings. And now we've had uh, a new focus on the U.S. market so that we can actually drive that software into the local areas. Okay. In the U.S. market, the as you look at both the off-premise and on-premise, how is your market shaping up? A percentage of what goes where? I would say that we've seen equal revenue opportunity from both. We see more workloads that come to us in terms of the traditional cloud services model, but we're seeing that large commercial entities who care about performance and security, especially those who are in regulated environments, tend to focus more on the private cloud side, and then they'll take smaller volumes of test and development environments and they'll put them into the traditional multi-tenanted environment that meets a certain security hurdle as well. You brought up security. It is obviously one of the key issues in the federal government and in the public sector marketplace. Is this software you've developed or is this software that you've combined with your base product set? That's a great question. So security, of course, has so many different facets to it that we call our approach and, and the industry certainly calls the approach defense in depth where you have to make sure that you have multiple layers of security at all areas that you're computing in. So the approach we took was to build some of our own IP in the areas where we felt multi-tenancy and virtual workloads did not have the same type of protection that traditional physical systems had. So we do have some of our own software. And earlier this year, we actually acquired a company that uh, operated pretty much um, solely in the federal space around security and compliance. 
and we integrated that. It was a product that we were OEM in for about two years prior, so we were very familiar with it. We already had it packaged with our software. And now the combination of our own IP, the IP that we acquired from that company, and also very strong third-party products that we use as inputs, we've now considered uh, our applications to be at the point where they are the most secure private cloud that you can get today on the market. We're partnered together in the federal marketplace. The Clearly, security is a huge issue. The commercial side of what you're representing, do they see security equally as important as the federal marketplace? Absolutely. In fact, uh, the approach that we've taken is to really go after security that meets the hurdles of the public sector and, more importantly, the higher end of the public sector from a security perspective and then take that to commercial. We have many industries, especially regulated ind industries like financial services and healthcare, where they view security, uh, I would say, equally as important to them as we've seen the federal agency's security. Uh, compliance requirements. You've been at this for a while. How do you view cloud in the federal marketplace? I think, you know, ever since the, uh, the Vivek Kundra initiative of several years ago, we've seen where everyone in the public sector has been looking to adopt cloud because that was pretty much a requirement. In the beginning, what we saw from the agencies was a reluctance to do it and maybe uh, an initial focus on the simpler things like email, and collaboration tools. However, in the past two years, as people, as what I would call their buyer IQ has increased around their intelligence and understanding of what cloud offerings can be, we've seen the shift now towards the higher end of economic payback, which tends to be in the legacy applications that people spend 80 to 90 percent of their IT budgets in. Clearly, we partnered with you. We see the value of your software and what you're bringing to market. Why did you partner with Vion? Well, we recognized um, that we needed help in terms of understanding what it is in the federal markets were important. That was one part of it. And Tom, certainly, uh, Vion has a great reputation in that particular arena. But the second piece is to deliver a really high quality private cloud solution we believe that the on-demand models have to be pervasive and we see the OEMs and the large uh, distributors for those OEMs still stuck in their traditional ways and what we really appreciated about the uh, Vion model is the capacity on demand because we feel that if you can bring the attributes of multi-tenancy into a private cloud environment where you have the security and the virtual the efficiencies of the virtual infrastructure and you can combine that with the actual hardware provisioning in an on-demand model, we see that as being by far the most compelling private cloud offering that you could bring to the federal space. Well, I appreciate the compliments about Vion. The If we look out two, three, four years, given the fact that you initially said you thought cloud was going to disappear, we're assuming cloud will now be around. So what is the next reiteration? What's the next generation of cloud look like? So first of all, to be clear, we thought the business of cloud would absolutely sustain itself. We thought the term cloud would go away because it's just such a hypothetical term to begin with. However, with that said, private cloud clearly is the hot area of the market now because people want to experiment with understanding how they can run in a shared environment in a more controlled manner within their own premise. However, the next iteration we think is hybrid. And so we've seen a very significant demarcation currently in buyers wanting certain workloads to sit in the public cloud and certain workloads to sit in a private cloud. And they view the security and the sensitivity and the compliance as being very significant inputs as to what goes where. In the hybrid cloud model, you really have to have an elastic security and compliance model that traverses both the off-prem and the on-prem. And we see that as the next coming of the cloud.